Hi booktube! Today I'm going to share with you all the books that I got in May, I think. I could have gotten one or two of these in June, but I have the June books collected in a different corner, so I think this is just the ones in May. It doesn't really matter because they are on my shelves. So it's way too hot outside and I just hate everything when it comes to the heat, so yeah. So I have four ebooks which is really fun. Uh, <clears throat> I swear the Oasis SFF Discord is horrible <laughs> when it comes to things like this. But the first book I have is Of Blood of Fire by Ryan uh, Cahill, which is a fantasy, yeah, set in a world where there has been a lot of war and we are following a character who's uh, brother died and he is going going to do this kind of test but three strangers come to his village and he is swept up in this war i just like like there were the three last sentences of the synopsis that got me and that is there is no prophecy his coming was not foretold he bleeds like any man and bleed he will yeah i'm really interested in that one then we have a, a book that was a body read and I there were so many people that just kept on nagging about it. So I got it. Now, uh, so We Break Immortals by Thomas Howard Riley. This is a nasty one. It's over 1000 pages. But in this one, we are following a woman who is, well, it, the first sentence is a drug addict who hunts sorceress down by tracking the magic. And yeah, she escaped from her home and she became a thief and then she started to hunt down Rouge, 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 sorceress. Um, and one person apparently managed to break something like, I guess that has to do with the title, We Break Immortals. And people are desperate to stop this person. I don't know what. And again, the last sentence, well, to technically, all they have to do is stop the un unstoppable, simple. Yeah, it sounded so good. Number three is Smoke and Stone by Michael R. Fletcher. And this one is the shortest one on this list which is a surprise and this is set in a world where humanity is well is it just in one it's a ringed city and outside is like zombies i mean haunted by the souls of all the world's dead well it don't it's yeah and we are following a character who wants to like this city has is built with like several rings and we are following a character well we are following two one uh, who is um born in the center ring or one of the center rings and then one who's born in the most outer ring so basically most vulnerable and she really wants to like elevate herself so that she gets in there's something at war, there's something with war and a war starting again with the gods. I, I have no idea and it just sounds so good. Like the synopsis makes me go, what? <laughs> what has that to do? Um, but yeah, I just, it, again, it sounded good. And I know I should probably stop myself because I don't really read my ebooks apparently. But mm. So the last ebook I got was The Blood of Our Outcast by D.A. Smith and this is following a person called Masuku who barely made out of a situation alive her clan was shattered and something she I guess she was injured or something because a demigod gets called due to her blood and she needs to unite other clans to a foreign sect of sources. I have no idea, but she's supposed to be dead and something with demons and things like that. I have no idea. 
I just I love the look of it. So as for the books that I know slightly, and uh, yeah, we can debate that <laughs> slightly more about, are the physical books. So I'm going to start with the manga that I got this month. And that is One Piece, volume 1 through 4. This is the Swedish translation. And I have way more volumes now. Um, One Piece follows a guy who wants to become... Actually, I'm not sure exactly what he wants. If he wants to find One Piece, which is supposedly this, like, humongous treasure. Or, like, the greatest treasure. Exactly what that is. I have no idea. Uh, or if he wants to become the Pirate King, or both, or interchangeably, I, I, I don't know. But um, this is so ridiculous. Um, the I, I have just loved this, because the entire thing just reminds me of the cartoons of when I was a kid. <laughs> and it has been so nostalgic. Uh, nostalgic. The reason why I haven't gotten to this one is because when I was at the second hand store where I got these they had volumes 1 through 40 except for volume 12 and when I got there to get the rest they did not have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12 12 was the one that was missing before so I had ordered some omnibuses I ordered the 4, 5, 6 1 and the 7, 8, 9, 1, and then 40, 41, 42. So I will have two overlaps with number 4 and number 40. And then I have also ordered the number 12 separately. Because here's the thing. All those volumes that I have purchased with these are still like those two omnibuses and that single issue. So seven volumes. Actually, let's go even better. Those two omnibuses is barely half of what I paid for all these secondhand. So yeah, I I have had so much fun and I, yeah, it's honestly hurting me to not continue. But I just feel like I don't want to add in twice. I want to read the omnibus instead. So I just... If you want some fun and you are my age, I'm 33, this will just bring all the nostalgia when it comes to the cartoons. 100%. And I covered it up. Whatever. So, next is one that I've had just laying here because I haven't uh, visited my body read friend for a while. But when you're watching this video, I will have given her her copy of the book. Uh, because basically I bought this as a Christmas present two years ago and then I was like huh I would actually want to read that myself so I got my own copy so I guess I have decided one of our buddy reads when it's my turn but it's fated by Benedict Yaka. this is a paranormal fantasy where we are following a person who is able to find things if you come to him and say that you want to require something, he might be able to get it to you. But yeah, and um, this story starts when he's trying to investigate something that had turned up at the British Museum. Honestly, I think that the synopsis online was a bit more meaty. But, yes, I, I considered keeping that book and I was like, just buy your own copy and get it over with. Next, we have a book that I have heard so many good things about and it's a duology, I think, who's finishing out this year. Will I get to it anyway? <laughs> no. But it's The Coward by Stephen uh, Arian. And this follows a person who... Well, there was this, was it a dragon or something? Epic quest. To slay the ice lich. And he's a legend, a hero. Um, he was the only survivor. Like, like he's 
really famous. However, then, then several uh, years later, we have another terror happening and they called for him because 10 years earlier, he defeated the Ice Lich. The problem is he didn't. And he was lucky and he does not want to sacrifice his life for anyone. It sounds so good and I've heard so many good things about this. And yeah, I cross my fingers that I really like this. Next we have Spine of the Dragon by Kevin J. Anderson. And this one is set in a world in which the god created the um, rep? rep and told them that their duty was to defeat a dragon, uh, a specific dragon. However, they needed help with that. So he created um, the humans. Well, no, the, the wreck created humans to work as their servants, their slaves and their soldiers. And then uh, there was a lot of war and the wreck annihilated it, each other and they completely like destroyed the environment and the world. Now, centuries later, the world has healed itself and all these wreck are just legends. However, one day uh, a Red Queen comes to a, a city and tells them that they need to um, do what they were supposed to do and be their soldiers because they still need to kill this dragon. It sounded so good um, and I have had this on my I want to buy this list. So when I saw it on um, like a discount, I did get it. Then we have Servant Mage by Kate Elliott. This is a short novella who follows a person who is an indentured servant who basically uses her demonic powers to lit lamps. I guess there's more to that. But uh, she gets freed by this rebellion forces or something. And then she gets pulled to into a plot that involves killing the newest royal baby and then something with her powers. I don't know, this is a short novella. I think this is like a standalone as well. So that would be really interesting because uh, Katie Elliott has written quite a lot of books and I have been intrigued by several of them. Um, so yeah, next we have another one that has been on my TBR for a while, mostly because of the fact that the way people describe it is, seems really, like beautiful and and the main character is supposed to be asexual so that is uh, Elatsoe by Darcelita Badger um, this is set in um, North America Texas I think actually when I looked something up about it I don't know why that was relevant but whatever uh, maybe I will find out but this follows a girl who yeah lives in this world where these legends and things are like real and she can talk to animal spirits. I don't really want to remember more about this. The only um, caveat I have is that this is supposed to be like a slower story so I definitely need to be in the right mood for it because I'm not really in the mood for slow stories right now. I'm struggling with them but yeah I, I have heard so many good things about this and I'm really happy that I have a copy. Next we have a book that I should not have purchased. But I did. And that is Dragon Shadow by Barbara Hambry. Ha Hambly. This is the sequel to Dragon Spain that I have not read. Yeah. Um, this the first book is set the first book is set after well a city or a country gets attacked by a dragon and a person gets sent out to find a dragon slayer. And yeah, in exchange for killing the dragon, he and his wife uh, will get aid with the bandits that are plaguing the area that they live in. But things happen uh, or things are revealed when they get to the city with some corrupt magic and things like that. Uh, yeah, I know I should not have bought, an, bought a sequel for a book that I have not started, but I did. 
Then about a book that I have been waiting for being in stock because it has been out of stock for ages. And that is Solo Leveling 1 by Xu Gong. This is a light novel in which um, we are following a person who is basically an E-rank adventurer, so like the lowest rank of adventurer there is. And he's so bad at it that when he shows up for, wor uh, for work, the other parties that are participating in it starts to relax because like, oh, he's there, therefore this will be easy. That's also mean. However, one day, uh, for this particular dungeon that they're there, turns out to be a double dungeon. So once they are defeated the first dungeon, it turns out that there's even something more and way more dangerous underneath. And the main character gets abandoned. However, just as he's going to die, he gets a message. Ping, congratulations on becoming a player. This has been sold out so long and I'm so happy to have this and I will do my best to fit this in with my next month, uh, with July, my, my July TBR. And in the same vein as that, actually, we have the Unwanted Undead Adventure. Um, I have one and two here. Now, this follows another adventurer who's not really good at what he's doing, but he gets by. However, one time he goes into a dungeon that has apparently, from what I gather from the synopsis, been explored several times. However, he manages to get into a part that no one really has been, and he gets eaten by a dragon. And when he wakes up, he's a pile of bones. And he needs to deal with it. And he wants to become more human again. Yes, I did sing that in my head. But yeah, this one, I have so many of these. Like I have um, Overlord, then I have the Skeleton Knight, and I have this as well. When it comes to the undead, like, okay. So those are all the books that I got in May. Did you get anything in May? Please tell me down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.